is good, everybody? Welcome back to another My Name Toys video. Today, we're back with another 2-in-1 WWE Elite figure review on the WWE Elite Series 102 Edge and Rhea Ripley figures. Now, these guys started off as friends and quickly became better enemies in the sense of the Judgment Day, but it is cool to, I guess, have that cup of coffee where Edge was the leader of the Judgment Day. I swear to God, it was, what, like two weeks, maybe? I could be wrong about that. Maybe it's just off memory, but wasn't he legitimately the leader for, like, a day and a half? I'm being over exaggerated. But it was very fast. And Rhea Ripley, this is our modern take on Rhea Ripley. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't look at this as a modern Rhea Ripley. I think if you were to paint all this purple on her completely black or like an off black or maybe even a shiny black or something like that, I feel like that would look better. And I'm going to look into possibly fixing her up in that way. We'll see about that, where that, you know, how, how that could come to fruition. But we do have a quote unquote updated Rhea Ripley here. And I'm a big fan of Rhea Ripley, so I'm enjoying this already. I love this. This edge figure. The coat, not a big fan of it off the cuff, but we do have a brand new Edge head sculpt. We got some cool gear. We'll dive into all the, you know, all the different stuff here, but let's shut the hell up and get into it. Here is Edge in his coat. You can't really see the gear just yet, but he does have his purple elbow pads and stuff like that. You have Edge on the side, Edge on the back there. It says, the Master Manipulator led the Judgment Day to a victory over AJ Styles, Finn Balor, and Liv Morgan at Hell is Cell 2022. They actually had a pay-per-view match? I guess they did, didn't they? But it was so, I don't know, man. It just felt like it went by in the blink of an eye. And then we have Rhea Ripley here. I was never a fan of this gear. Is this not like that gear that she had to like throw together in the... I think it, there was like a story where she like threw this gear together back in the wardrobe like section of, of backstage or like she got with the person that's in charge of wardrobe and they just kind of threw this together at the last moment because she forgot her gear or something. And now it's recreated in figure form but you know standard packaging Rhea Ripley on the back. 5'7"? She's only 5'7"? My god bro. When you see her she looks 6'3". So this is both of their Hell in a Cell 2020 22 gear, which is pretty interesting, but no, let's man, let's crack these guys out of the packaging, find out what they're all about, take a look at them, and get into the details of both of these action figures. But before we do so, you can go over to Ringside Collectibles, use code MDTOYS to save yourselves 10% on these guys. Always appreciate you guys using the code. You guys are MVPs that use the code. Always use the code MDTOYS. But now that we've covered that, let's crack these guys out of their packaging. Ha ha ha! The rotating base is completely fixed, Brad. Let's give it W's in the chat right now for the rotating base. I think that might have earned him an MDT Hall of Fame induction by God. Nonetheless, man, these figures look good. I do have my gripes with both of them, and we're gonna we're gonna dive into all those things. I still like both figures a lot at first glance, but we won't know the full details of that until we dive into the figures themselves. But just at first glance, I do like some stuff going on, but we are absolutely gonna dive into the things I don't like. And the reason the edge I left him in the coat for this specific reason is because people as much as I shish on the entrance jackets and the rubber jackets and things of that nature I know there are people out there that will watch this video that like the jacket or want to want to keep the jacket on and I wanted to give you guys like a 360 look at the figure on the rotating base so you guys can kind of make that judgment call for yourselves I personally do not like it and so I wanted to give this option to people so you guys can see what it looks like 360 all the way around for your for your displays and for your collection. So if that's the if that's what you wanted, here you go, Brad. Because at the end of the video, he's absolutely not going to have that on. So I just wanted to make that clear right now. And the same goes for Rhea Ripley. Hers isn't as bad, obviously, because it doesn't have sleeves on it, so it doesn't impede her articulation. But nonetheless, let's shut the hell up, dive into Rhea Ripley's accessories and Rhea Ripley, and then we'll run it back and take a closer look at Edge's accessories and Edge. All right, so getting into Rhea Ripley's accessories, you start off with the entrance. Go back the hell up just a, just a minute. There it is. Her entrance duster is decent. You know, it's got decent sculpts on there. It's got chains on there that are unpainted, which isn't accurate. But you do have, like, uh, your different buttons and sculpts and little bat wings and cool stuff going on here. But it's nothing, like, over the top or crazy. You do have some, like, it's all textured, which is nice. But I guess it's not bad. You know, I'm glad they included it. I think a Judgment Day t-shirt would have been cool or a top or something like that would have been cool. But... It does fit the gear. This is what she wore. She had spikes on there, which isn't really included here. They're, like, really short and, like, cut off, but it's just kind of weird. But I like this better than a rubber jacket fully, and, you know, I'll take it, I guess. And then you have interchangeable hands. You have the interchangeable mic-holding hands or weapon-wielding hands, and they actually put the tattoos on the pegs, which I think is pretty cool. They actually printed the tattoos onto the pegs, which I, I like that. That's sweet. That makes it... That's a detail. You, you care about that. That's... that's that. You get pops for me for that. And then you have the devil horn hands or the, you know, the rock and roll 
roll hands or whatever you want to say. And the tattoo doesn't extend as far down, but it's still, you know, it's still going to show, which is good on the peg. And I could be wrong. There's no nail polish on here, but I'm willing to bet that she had nail polish on. But I could be wrong about that. I'm just making a, I'm, I'm betting. I'm, I'm, I'm a betting man, and I'm going to take the odds that she was wearing nail polish. They just didn't put it on the figure. But I could be wrong. All right, guys, so getting into Rhea Ripley's head sculpt here, it's basically the Elite 84 from what I'm seeing. I don't really see a lot of difference here. It's just repainted, I think. I guess we'll do the comparison, but I mean, these are pretty, yeah, these are the exact same head sculpt, are they not? I'd argue that the Elite 84 looks better, but I guess it's like her dark makeup. I also like the fade on here. I think that looks pretty cool, but I don't know. I would have liked to have seen a newer head sculpt, to be honest, but who am I? I like the dog collar right here or the spike collar. I guess it's not technically a dog collar, but you know, you know what I meant. You have the purple top here, which I was not a fan of this attire. And I'm also getting like some weird like smudges here. You guys can see that little smudge there. There's like this white stuff on the plastic. I got like a paint splotch here from the skin tone there. So that's real weird. Yeah, I'm getting some paint QC problems, but I do like that she has like her tattoos on here. There's another little paint issue there. I like that she has a lot of her tattoos. I just hate that they're like covered up by these like sleeves here, which I guess it's supposed to be, you know, like she's wearing a thin, you know, like like back here on the packaging, it's it's a thin little mesh or see-through style shirt, so you can see the tattoos underneath, which is good for details, I guess, but I would have preferred an attire that actually shows off her tattoos and stuff like that, because I'm a big fan of tattoos, I love tattoos, I have my own tattoos, so... That would have been cool, but she's got her piece here, and then she also has this un... I guess you could call this an accessory, but she wears it 24-7 in her matches, so I don't really take this as an accessory, but you can take this off if you want to, but she's got the black and the purple, and back here... I'm pretty sure her cheeks are supposed to be... What she wears is she wears these and it like goes up under her cheeks. And so this is supposed to be like skin tone right here. I guess you could customize that if you wanted to be more accurate. But you may be... Yeah, you, you get what I'm saying. You got the chain mail going through here, which is cool. And then you have her fishnets or whatever you want to say. And then she has all of her leg tattoos again. I'd like to see the tattoos not covered up next time is what I would like to see. So, you know, you got the moth and you got like her different tattoos here. Which all of her tattoo work looks really good. So that's all cool. And then, then she has this new boot sculpt that looks really good with all these different belts and buckles and all that stuff which look good. Her last figure had like really loose feet and I'm not getting that here so that's an upgrade for me but I'm enjoying the Rhea Ripley figure. I think she's she's probably my favorite women's wrestler on the roster right now and she's uh, she's a stud. Now, as far as your Rhea Ripley figure comparisons, here's the Elite 84 and then the new Elite 102. Very similar figures. This one's better. It has double jointed arms and stuff like that. You might could fix this one up to be double jointed but I'm definitely liking her new look better than her old look which they're very similar let's be honest. You know, she's got like that gothic -y black metal look to her, which fits him well. I think she looks great on WWE television. Also, if you guys want to see what this looks like with the Elite 100 Becky Lynch SmackDown Women's Championship, here is her carrying the championship. So, you know, you got that right there. There's your Judgment Day Women's Champion Rhea Ripley. And then if you want to see her up next to the Judgment Day. Now, we don't have an updated Finn yet. I bet we get an updated Finn very, very soon, though. I could see us getting one in like Elite Series. I don't, I don't know. We haven't seen one. All the figures they announced, they still didn't announce a Finn Balor. I'm sure that's coming down the line. But we'll get a, a Judgment Day Finn Balor, I'm sure, in the long pants and the J's and stuff like that. And we are getting an updated Dominic Mysterio, which is coming fairly soon. I thought about making a fix-up custom of a Dominic. We'll see how that goes. It'd be really easy to do, besides the head sculpt. But it may even be... I don't know. I'm going to look into that. I'm going to see what I can do about that. Maybe we can do that on surgery or something like that. It's just, this is way too colorful to be an updated Dom. But the head sculpt works for an updated Dom. It's making the the skin tones on him, Eddie Guerrero, guys like that is way wrong, but it is cool to see the Judgment Day up next to each other. And then, I guess, for another comparison, we can bring in the Edge figure so you guys can see how these all fit in together if you guys want to do, like, some Judgment Day shelf or something. I think they all fit in pretty well, and yeah. So, there is your Judgment Day Rhea Ripley figure comparison. Alright guys, so getting into Edge's accessories, we do have the rubber coats, so we got two figures here, both from Judgment Day, both with rubber coats, and both can burn in hell. So, you already saw it on the figure, but it's got the clasps in the front. Like, I <sighs> Cue the Matt Cardona Major Wrestling Figure Podcast clip. Like, oh my god, that goddamn fucking old school Mattel stuck in that pose jacket. Gonna... I mean, it's the, f it's the. <laughs> 
I mean, that's what it is. You're stuck in the pose, bro. You're stuck. You put on your rubber straight jacket and you live there. And I, I hate it. I hate it. The only way this makes sense is an Ultimate Edition or Supreme Form or cloth jacket with some added little rubber pieces. And that is it for me. I don't think this should exist. Either make it operational or don't. At least that's just the camp that I'm in. I don't know if you guys agree with it. I just, I, I don't know. I just, I'd much rather have a cloth t-shirt than this entrance gear. Let third parties out there make the make the jackets or whatever in cloth form, I guess, if we, if Mattel can't do it. I, I don't know. But it's got the belts, it's got the straps going around. It's got good sculpts on it. It's not a bad sculpt, I just don't like it. Then outside of that, he has Mike holding hands on the right hand. It has black tape, and on the left it has nothing, and then it has a ring on the middle finger. It went along with the devilish gimmick. He put the wedding ring from the ring finger to the middle finger to say F the family dynamic. And then he has the fisted hands. Right has the black tape, left has the, the F you to all, all marriages, I guess. So getting into the Edge Elite 102 figure, the head sculpt's solid. I think the likeness to Edge is there. I like the salt and pepper beard. You kind of got, well, I guess it's like salt, pepper, and paprika a little bit in there. We got like this rigid, reddish hair tone, which isn't really accurate. I feel like his hair's more blonde than this like brownish reddish color that's coming across, but I guess it gets the job done. It looks like Edge, and you could probably, honestly, I mean, I know the Elite 83 was a really good smiling Edge head sculpt, but if you wanted to fix that up, you could probably like shave down the hair and then put an Edge hair piece on there, which would probably be cool, kind of cool. I don't know. We'll look into that. Daniel Bryan torso for Edge. I mean, good Christ, man. The first Elite Edge was Elite Series 1, and ever since then, we've still gotten this torso. Even back then, it didn't work for him. I think the Terry Funk torso would have been cool, and nowadays, he needs the Elite 23 Cesaro torso. The ripped up, like, Finn Balor style, but with Cesaro's chest hair and stomach hair, but anyway, you got all his tattoos on here. The purple on the elbow pads is solid, and I actually like the color. Even though it's not the most accurate color, I like the way that the color of this matches with the elbow pads better than the like the hand graphics that remind me a lot of like the Undertaker's entrance you know when the hands are coming up trying to pull them to the to, to hell or whatever and then this is really cool for the judgment day how you have the scales here you know from the legal system and stuff like that and you got the skull with the eyes around the really sweet graphics and stuff I think this gear was made by main event gear on Instagram very talented they've made a lot of gear for a lot of talent and their gears are always really detailed and stuff like that so I highly recommend following them on Instagram they're a really cool follow and you have open knee pads here, which I don't think we've ever seen on an Edge figure. It's usually like the standard Seth Rollins style, so that's pretty cool to see those those graphics there. And I'm pretty sure this this knee pad right here is supposed to be purple, unless at that specific Hell in a Cell pay-per-view, he wore two black knee pads, which I could be wrong about, but then you have the hand graphics here, which I just don't like the inconsistencies in the purple. Because if you actually look at images of the gear, the purples are all pretty much the same, and they could, they could you guys can see from back here, I guess it creates a little bit of depth, but I don't know. It just is kind of all over the place, and it kind of throws me off, but I'm not a big fan of edge legs. I feel like they're very, very stiff because they're on the pine cone joints, and again, we've seen this since Elite Series 1, so it's it's just time to retire it, man. It's time to retire it. We finally got an updated Rollins formula. We need to get an updated AJ Styles formula, an updated edge formula. There's just so many formulas that should be updated nowadays, but nonetheless, I'm not going to go through the articulation. We've seen over 100 sets since this exact formula has been used. Outside the addition of the double-jointed arms, let's get into some Edge Elite figure comparisons. So for your modern Edge figure comparisons, you have the Elite 102 here, the Elite 94 with a head swap, the ringside exclusive with a head swap, so I swapped these two. Was in the process of putting this torso on there. Like, I just think this torso right here makes these figures look so much better, man. Look at how good this Elite 83 and this Elite 83 chase is. And then you have the Ultimate here, which I do not like that head sculpt at all. But this has a little bit better lightness, I think, to Edge. But all these are pretty solid Edge head sculpts outside of this one. I'm not a big fan of this one. This one is like my favorite throwback edge. Then we have the Ruthless Aggression Elite that's coming, which is a, a good Ruthless Aggression edge. I don't know, man. I really enjoy Edge. I, I love his figures. I think they're really dope. I just think that this right here is a much better suitable torso for an updated modern edge. But uh, who am I? You know, it, it is cool to see all these up next to each other. It's kind of crazy. We've seen one, two, three, four, five edges. Outs not counting like Legends figures and throwbacks, but I'm enjoying the Edge figure collections. I, I'm definitely going to try my best to get another one of these torsos. I got to update both of these though, so it just looks so much better. You can't you can't fight me on it, man. It's accurate. But I think that pretty much wraps up this 2-in-1 WWE Elite Series 102 review of Edge and Rhea Ripley. I, I Again, like I love Edge. I love Rhea Ripley, so I am a fan of these figures. I do think, however, they are not without faults. Like, obviously, Rhea Ripley. I think I would have preferred a new head 
sculpt. I know that her hairstyle, and I love the fade on the side. I think that's a nice touch. I like the updated makeup and, like, the little face tattoo and stuff like that. I love that. I love the updates that we got. However, I would have liked to have seen a new sculpt from that. I do understand the reuse, and it looks just like her. It's not a bad head sculpt. I just would prefer a new sculpt, but that's kind of just nitpicking. I also wasn't a big fan of this gear, and I don't like that a lot of her tattoos are covered up, but again, these are all personal preferences. So as far as what we got here... I like the boot sculpt. Her boots are not loose like they were last time on her Elite 84 figure. I like the pinless joints. You know, obviously they couldn't put her cheekage in there for, because it's Mattel and they're just not going to do that. Jazzwares would have absolutely done it. But I think she looks good holding the SmackDown Women's Championship. I like the figure a lot. I think it's one of the better women's figures we'll probably see this year. But Mattel's been on a great clip lately of giving us really awesome female figures. So that's a, another great thing. We are in the golden era of not only wrestling figure collecting, but women's wrestling action figure collecting, man. Because they used to be abysmal and now they're getting to where they're some of the best damn figures they put out. And then as far as Edge is concerned, it's the Daniel Bryan torso, which pisses me off. And also, the I don't like the color inaccuracies on the gear, and the in inconsistencies really bother me. I'm also not a big fan of the rubber coat, but... I understand why they did that, but yeah, I'm just not a fan of rubber accessories, man. I just don't think I ever will be. I just cannot get on board with them. But at the end of the day, if you guys would like these figures, you enjoy what you saw, use code MDTOYS over at Ringside Collectibles where you can get all of your awesome wrestling action figures. I enjoyed the review. I enjoy both these figures, and it'll be very interesting to see where they go in the Elite 102 ranking. I think the Elite 102 ranking is going to be real fun. Nonetheless, man, before we get out of here, huge shout-out to our patrons of the MDT YouTube channel. Huge shout-out to those guys. They're incredible. I appreciate their support so very much. If you guys would like to be included in that and you want to get in on the patron exclusive content and the bonus stuff, check out the link in the description below. But that is going to do it, man. Thank you guys so very much for watching. Hope you guys did enjoy. Leave me your thoughts down below on all these figures. I'm getting out of here. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at MyDamnToys. I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a blessed one, and I'll see you next time. We'll never